Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'm building this AMT 125th scale 1983 Chevrolet Camaro Z28 into a fully functioning radio controlled car, retaining as many scale details as possible without sacrificing performance or making it too difficult to build. The goal for this project was to strike a nice balance of scale realism, such as including the full interior, but not making the car overly complex by utilizing an FFR SC1 chassis as a base. The result turned out awesome, and I'm really excited to be able to showcase the full build process start to finish, and hopefully provide some ideas and inspiration to all of you builders out there, or at least provide you with an hour of entertainment. With that said, let's get started. The first step, like with any RC project utilizing a model car kit, is to unbox and have a look at all the parts that are included with this kit. This AMT 125th scale Camaro looked great both inside and out. Kudos to whoever did the box art. Inside the parts looked great overall, apart from a few minor blemishes such as this hole between the instrument panel and the vents, all the parts are well molded and show some nice detail. The body especially looked great, and seems like a very accurate representation of the real car. One thing that I thought was really nice was that duplicates of some of the decals are provided. I also like that there are plenty of license plate choices and even a decal for the taillights if you don't want to paint them. Of course, quite a few of these parts will not be used for this project, such as the engine and chassis. I'll only be using the body and interior for this project. By this point, I had already spent some time deciding what color I wanted to paint the body. I decided I wanted to go with black with gold trim like this car here. After getting a good look at all the parts, I was ready to begin assembling the kit as well as building the chassis and getting everything mounted. After having a chance to take a look at all of the parts that are included with this kit, I now needed to figure out what modifications to the body will need to be made so that it will fit onto the chassis and have room for all the electronics. I first needed to make room for the MS-01 front suspension and steering assembly that I'll be using. It was clear that these inner fender sections under the hood would need to be removed. A hot knife made doing this effortless. I started out by just removing what you see here, but later I removed even more to prevent the larger wheels and tires I'll be using from rubbing. With those sections removed, I continue by test fitting parts that will mount to the body, including the front fascia, spoiler, hood, and rear panel. I trimmed and sanded away any imperfections and ensured they fit well. To further improve the appearance of the body, I marked any mold lines with a permanent marker and then sanded them smooth. For anyone who is unaware, the mold lines on plastic models like this are a result of the manufacturing process. These lines are not on the real car, so it looks better to have these lines sanded flush with the rest of the body. Next I test fit the clear plastic parts. I'll sand around the edges until they fit tight against the body, but also being careful not to scratch any sections that will be visible. One thing that I noticed while test fitting the spoiler was that it appeared to be slightly too long to fit properly on the body. 
To fix this, I cut the outer sections off right on the body line. I then sanded away the excess material and will later glue each individual piece to the body. There were also a few small imperfections on the front fascia that I decided to fill with a little bit of hobby putty. I allowed the putty to dry and then sanded the surface smooth before gluing it to the rest of the body. I also used a little bit of putty to fill this small gap on the front since this lower trim piece on the full-size cars is one piece. It's a small and pretty insignificant detail, but all it takes is a little filling and sanding to make it more accurate, so why not? With the body now coming together, I also began test fitting the interior. Later on, I'll need to make quite a few modifications to the interior tub to allow it to fit onto the chassis, as well as have room for all the electronics. Here I wanted to figure out a way to secure the hood but also allow it to be easily removable. To do this I used magnets. I started by gluing magnets onto the bottom of the hood and then marked the position of where I needed to drill the holes for the bottom magnets to sit on the cowl. I drilled these holes about the same diameter as the magnets, then glued the lower magnets to the body. The result is a hood that stays secure because of the magnets but can still be easily removed. Next I turned my attention to the interior tub and main chassis piece. It was clear that some material was going to need to be removed so that the interior could sit far back enough on the chassis. I marked where material would need to be removed from and began using a hot knife to cut these sections out. I continued to gradually remove more material, test fitting the interior tub frequently to see where I needed to cut next. In addition to the modifications made to allow the interior tub to sit further back on the chassis, I needed to remove some material from the transmission tunnel to allow plenty of room for the motor. Since I'll be using a torque arm rear suspension similar to what was used on the full-size Camaros of this era, I needed to ensure that there would be enough room for the torque arm chassis mount. Here I'm installing the steering servo so I can see where I need to cut the interior to allow it to fit. I also wanted to make sure that there would be plenty of room for the servo arm to move. To ensure this, I removed a section of the interior and dash.
While test fitting the torque arm, I noticed that I needed to remove some material from the bottom of the interior to increase the clearance. I carefully ground this area down with a rotary tool and a small grinding bit. With the interior tub fitting how I wanted, I moved on to assembling the seats. Like with the body, I sanded away any imperfections, and I also sanded the transition between the front and rear piece to help make it appear seamless. At this point, the interior was fitting great onto the chassis and allowed the body to sit where it needed to be. After that, I turned my attention over to figuring out where I was going to place all the electronics. Obviously on a build this small, compact electronics are needed so that everything will fit. I removed the Radiolink R4EH-G receiver from its case to make this component easier to fit into the car. I spent quite a bit of time brainstorming and experimenting with different places to mount each of the electronic components. After a while, I decided the best place for the receiver would be tucked under the dash, and I would mount the ESC to the front of the car. To allow enough room for the receiver, I removed some material from the section of the interior tub and dash. The battery fit perfectly onto the rear of the chassis, but finding a way to get the battery wired to the ESC was a little bit of a challenge. Since the interior tub sits flat on the chassis, and I don't want to run any of the wires through the interior, the best and simplest option that I could come up with was to run the wires under the chassis like this. I finished up the interior by cutting the remaining parts off the tree and glued the steering column and steering wheel to the dash. I used a little bit of hobby putty to patch up this hole. To secure the interior tub to the chassis, I decided to use two screws that can be inserted through the bottom of the chassis. I oversized the holes on the chassis to allow for some adjustability. I glued the nuts onto the bottom of the interior tub for the machine screws to thread into. The driver and passenger seats will be placed over top of them so they won't be visible. Since I'll be painting the body black, but I want to have a tan colored interior, I cut some pieces of thin styrene to create some simple interior panels and a headliner that can be painted separately and then glued inside. I 
I also cut two small pieces of styrene to use as sun visors. I finished it up by applying a couple coats of primer. Next step was to test fit some wheels. I tried on two different sets with different backspacing to see which one would fit the best. There is no width standardization with plastic model cars like there is with larger 1 scale RC bodies that are usually between 190 and 200 millimeters in width. Model cars, just like the full-size vehicles they replicate, come in a wide variety of different wheelbases and widths. So I need to experiment with some different rear axle widths, spacing, and wheels to figure out which will fit the best. I found that these deeper dish wheels fit very well, plus I preferred the look of them. I did a little sanding on the back side of each wheel to remove the remnants of the support material used while being 3D printed. I then rinsed them and let them dry. The axle that I was using for mock-ups earlier was the correct width, but not the axle that I'm using for this build. I needed to assemble a MA10 axle that I'll be using for this car. After another test fit, I determined that I wanted to remove a little bit of material from a few sections on the body and the interior tub. It's a very snug fit with these wider than stock tires, and I wanted to have as much room as possible to eliminate the possibility of any wheel rub. In addition to that, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I decided to remove some additional material from around where the front wheels will be. This not only gave me more room, but I also thought this under the hood section looked a lot cleaner after this additional section was removed. Next I wanted to install the motor and drivetrain and see how much clearance I have for the drive shaft and torque arm. I removed as much material as I could from the section of the interior tub. The MS-01 front suspension and steering assembly that I used for this build is an older prototype, but functions great. One thing I noticed, however, is that the height of this assembly is causing the body to not sit as low on the chassis as I want it, 
and the wide tires are rubbing against the upper strut tower. The best solution that I could come up with to eliminate this issue was to modify the assembly by removing the upper strut bar and sanding down this top section of the upper strut tower as far back as possible to allow more room for the wider tires. Although this fix required a little bit of hacking, the result works flawlessly and everything fits much better. By this point, the base chassis was ready to go. The suspension moved smoothly and fit the body just about perfect. And the interior tub was also now able to fit onto the chassis thanks to the modifications made earlier. I'm keeping the electronics simple for this build and using as compact of components as possible, all of which are listed below in the description. Since I had already test fit and made room for all the electronics earlier, now all I needed to do was wire everything together. Since space is limited, I didn't want to have too much excess wire, so for a lot of the connections I unsoldered each wire, cut it shorter and then re-soldered it to the ESC. Although wiring all the components directly together would have made everything a little more compact, I decided to include connectors for every connection to make changing a component easier. Of course, it's always a good idea at this stage to test everything to ensure it's working. At this stage in the build, I was ready to begin painting. I had previously sanded the entire exterior of the body with 600 grit sandpaper to help with adhesion. Next I applied several coats of primer to the body. After allowing the primer to fully dry, I wet sanded the entire body, rinsed it, and then let it dry. While it was drying, I test fit the side view mirror pieces to ensure they fit well. I then prepared the interior components for several coats of black paint. On some of the parts like the interior tub, I masked off certain sections that I don't want painted. With the gloss black paint already in the airbrush, I began applying the first coats onto the body. I started by painting the inside of the body and areas under the hood. Once that was complete, I started painting the outside. I did my best to match the tan interior color that I've seen in reference images and began painting all of the interior parts I wanted tan. At 
At this point, everything was really starting to look good. In addition to the body and interior, I also painted the chassis flat black. Despite my best efforts to build up a nice smooth wet look while painting the body, there was a lot of orange peel that I did my best to remove by using 2000 grit sandpaper and gradually transitioning to finer grits and then used polish. I added some details to the interior, such as painting the center console and a few other sections of the interior tub black. I paid close attention to the reference images, making sure that these sections are as accurate as possible. I also touched up a few sections on the underside. Another thing that I did to add a little more detail to the interior was paint the Z28 emblem on the dash. This didn't turn out looking amazing, but I still like that it adds some color. After that, I painted a few subtle details using flat black paint. When positioning the passenger seat, I made sure that there would be enough room for the steering servo. I'm very pleased with how the interior turned out, and I also really like the contrast of the black and tan. After allowing the paint time to cure, I masked off the lower ground effects and painted them gold. The gold paint around the bottom looks great, but unfortunately a section of black paint came off with the masking tape, so this area will need to be touched up before continuing. While I had the gold paint in the airbrush, I painted the wheels. I had been contemplating what color I wanted to paint the wheels, and decided to go ahead and paint them gold to see how I liked them. I really liked how they turned out, and how they matched the lower ground effects. I did the best I could with a brush to touch up the black paint on this lower part of the body. I did one last round of wet sanding and polish to get the paint a little smoother. It's by no means perfect, but it's an improvement. I didn't want to invest a lot of time trying to get the paint looking flawless, since the car will inevitably get some scratches and chips with use anyway. 
Next, I applied all of the water slide decals that I wanted to go under the clear coat. The decals went on pretty nicely, though some of the clear sections on the edges are visible. In the future, I'm going to try using a setting solution for decals like these to see if that helps. After the decals were on, I began applying the clear coat. I applied it in a number of light coats. Like with the paint, I wanted to try to build the clear up into a nice wet look, but I once again got some serious orange peel. I'll definitely need to make some adjustments and work on improving my technique for painting with acrylics, but fortunately I was able to really improve the surface by wet sanding, polishing, and applying wax. Some paint peeled off the front while removing the hood, and I also sanded through a few spots here and there, so I once again did my best to touch up these sections. Along with touching up a few sections around the body, I also used a black acrylic wash to add some detail to these front lower vents. Although it wasn't the best paint job, fortunately a little sanding and polish really helped make it look better. I decided to paint the rear tail lights by using an airbrush. The process took some time, but was very simple. I started by masking off the outside of the tail light and masking everything on the back except the section of the tail light that I was going to paint. I started by painting the black section towards the center of the car and worked my way out to the red brake lights on the outer edges. After each section was painted, I backed everything with silver paint. To complete the tail lights, I painted the black stripe down the center. There were a few decals that I applied after applying the clear coat, such as these satin black decals that go on the hood. I wanted there to be some contrast between these decals and the glossy paint. I 
I also painted a few satin black sections around the headlights and the door handles. I then painted the side marker lights amber. Before I glued the headlights to the body, I first checked to ensure that they fit. I then painted the back section silver. Although doing it this way turned out nice, I think painting the back of each individual lens would have looked a little better. Instead of painting around the outer edge of the lens, I used a Sharpie permanent marker to create a black edge, which turned out looking great and was much easier than using a brush. For all the headlight and taillight pieces, I made sure to use glue that dries clear. I once again made sure to use a glue that would dry clear when securing the windows, since they require quite a bit of glue to stay in place. Here I'm assembling and mounting the side view mirrors to the body. With the windows in, I can now install the custom headliner pieces that I made earlier. At this point, both the body and interior were finished, and I was ready to complete the car. After doing a quick mock-up to see how the ride height was looking, I decided I wanted to try to lower the car down a little further. Because the interior tub sits directly on top of the chassis, there's no easy way for me to drop down the body. Instead, I lowered the suspension down a little further, and I also removed some material from above the drive shaft socket on the axle so it has enough clearance. Next, I installed the rear chassis piece. I drilled out these holes so these screws will go in easier. Once that was in place, I mounted the trunk pan piece. As I discussed previously, I'm going to run some wires underneath the car that go from the battery to the ESC. After spending some time figuring out the best way to route the wires, I decided to drill some holes in this back section of the chassis for the wires to go through. Normally I would use some shrink wrap to cover this area that I just soldered, but I didn't have any on hand that would fit these wires, so I just covered these sections with some glue when securing the wires to the bottom of the chassis. Before doing that though, I wanted to do a quick test to make sure everything was still working.
Because I needed to use a lot of glue to get the wires held in place, I painted over the wires to help make the bottom of the chassis look a little better. After that, I bunched up all the wires and got the receiver and ESC mounted in place. It took some effort to get everything positioned where I wanted, but after some time, everything was fitting great. After doing a few quick mock-ups, I determined that adding a little weight would help drop the ride height, which was something I wanted to do. So I made a part that could be glued to the front to secure some lead weights. To get the rear sitting at a height that I wanted, I gradually cut the spring a little lower and I also added a little weight to the back as well. With this small amount of tweaking, I was able to get the ride height at a level that I was happy with. Ideally I'd like for it to be a little lower, but practically I really can't go any lower than this. I don't like how visible these front weights are, so at some point, I might find a way to mount them up higher to where they aren't visible. To keep the rear springs in place, I used a very small amount of glue, just enough to keep them in place, but not too much so that they can still be removed if needed. Figuring out a way to secure the body to the interior tub, but still allow them to be separated was somewhat difficult but I eventually decided to use Velcro mounted on the inside of each door. I needed to use a small piece of styrene mounted to the inside of the body so that the Velcro would not be too far away from the interior. I wanted to add some tailpipes to the rear of the car. I designed and printed a set that could be easily mounted to the bottom of the chassis. I smoothed out the 3D printed layers with some sandpaper before painting. I also wanted to add a set of these brake rotors to the wheels just to add a little more detail. I painted all these parts with silver paint and then used a little flat black to paint the insides of the tailpipes. Installing all of these parts was very simple. The discs simply get glued to the backside of the wheels and the tailpipes are glued to the underside of the chassis.
Although they're subtle details, I think they add a lot to the car overall. At this point, the car is complete, and I'm really pleased with the finished result. Although the paint certainly could have been better, I really like the black and gold paint scheme with the tan interior. I also really like how the wheels turned out. I think both the design and being painted to match the lower section really looks good. I'll be experimenting with different tires on this car, which I'll be mounting to different wheels that I plan on painting different colors, so it'll be fun to experiment and see how this car looks with different wheels. The only thing I don't like visually are the front weights, as I had mentioned previously. I'll probably end up remounting them higher up at some point. Of course, looks is just part of the equation. Now I wanted to see how the car would drive. Along with a scale accurate body, I also wanted the car to drive relatively scale as well. Or in other words, I wanted the car to drive smooth with plenty of torque. The result turned out great. The small N20 motor and gear reduction assembly produce tons of torque relative to the car and allows the car to drive very smoothly even at lower speeds and accelerate surprisingly quick for such a tiny motor. Here I'm first testing the car without the body so I can ensure everything on the chassis is looking good and that nothing is getting too hot. I only had a small space to set up a little track so I did the best with what I've got. The somewhat slower, more scale speeds this car runs at makes it fun to drive even in a very small space such as this. The soft silicone tires on the car right now provide a ton of traction as you can see. I'll be experimenting with harder tires that won't provide as much traction and will cause the car to slide more which I think will make the car more interesting to drive.
I really couldn't be happier with the performance at this stage, and I look forward to continuing to experiment and improve the car as time goes on. I had a blast not only building this car, but also putting together this video. I'm really trying to step up my game for 2019 and have some fun experimenting with different ways of presenting the content. If you'd like to support this channel and get yourself early access to videos and 3D print files, you can become a patron at the Patreon link below in the description. You'll also find a link to the Make It RC shop, as well as a list of the parts that I used for this build. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I also want to showcase some of the awesome projects viewers have been posting in the Make It RC Facebook group. Again, thanks everyone, and I'll see you next time.